Hey everybody, it's Emily back with another Grass River micro class. I'm hanging out off the Chippewa Loop on a beautiful fall day after a long stretch of rain. Um, so back in 2020, uh, I did a video about bird migration and specifically the costs and benefits for birds of migrating. Um, so we're gonna revisit that topic today of migration, but we're going to talk about the how of migration, specifically how birds sleep when they migrate. You might think you know the answer, but recent research just in the past six years has debunked a lot of the long-held theories that scientists had about this. Um, so listen along and you might learn something new. Okay, so interestingly, a lot of bird migration happens at night. Um, and this is for a couple reasons. Uh, they can use the stars and the moon to navigate. Um, the nighttime is free of some common predators like domestic cats that might be let out during the day um, or bird eating hawks like Sharpshin and Cooper's hawks. Uh, the air is more stable because there aren't the thermals that are caused by the sun heating up um, certain columns of air. And then lastly, uh, it's cooler out. So the birds, which are working very hard, um, are in less of a danger of overheating. Um, and so some birds will migrate at night and then they'll make um, stopovers uh, or pit stops at these refueling places during the day where they might sleep. But some birds actually fly continuously, not just throughout the night, but for days and weeks and sometimes even months um, at, a, at one time without landing. So this obviously raised the question of, well, how do birds sleep when they're migrating, when they're doing this? Um, and for a long time, decades, scientists assumed that birds slept while they're migrating in the same way that dolphins sleep, in that they would sleep with one half of the brain at a time. Uh, so if a bird was sleeping with the right side of its brain at a time, the right hemisphere, um, it would have its left eye closed, sort of like a cool little pirate bird. And then if it was sleeping with its left side, it would have its right eye closed. Um, and that would be in order, the hypothesis went at least, um, so that birds could maintain some level of consciousness um, and that they that would allow them to sort of maintain that um, that flight. Dolphins do it, of course, so that they can remember to come to the surface to breathe um, throughout the night. But as I mentioned earlier, that's actually not the whole story, and we're going to get into that next. Enter the 2016 frigate bird studies. So. This was a study done by scientists from the Max Planck Institute of Ornithology, and they realized that, hey, great frigate birds would be the perfect study organism to look at this question of how do birds sleep when they are on these really, really long flights. And that's for two reasons. One, because frigate birds are known to make these weeks long flights out over the open ocean, and they physically cannot land on the surface of the water like a lot of other seabirds can. Um, because their their feathers aren't waterproof and they actually the birds can become waterlogged and can actually drown um, Very easily so they don't land at all while they are making these days and weeks long flights The second thing is that frigate birds were big enough that um, they could support the batteries that uh, Scientists needed to use to implant these this EEG equipment and also tracking equipment on the birds to be able to study them. And the EEG is what measures the brain activity uh, that can tell the scientists the level of wakefulness um, of the birds. So scientists put trackers and um, EEG equipment on a bunch of frigate birds and what they found was that like they had expected and the hypothesis had gone for decades, uh, the birds sometimes did sleep with one half of their brain at a time but what they didn't expect to find was that sometimes the birds slept with both halves of their brains at the same time, meaning they were totally asleep when they were flying. Um, now, they only really did this when they were soaring. They only did this when they were soaring. They never did this when they were flapping their wings actively, but still they could maintain control of flight when they were totally asleep only for about 10 seconds. This total um, brain sleep only occurred ever in bouts of about 10 seconds um, in these like power naps. And the birds um, entered during these power naps, a type of sleep called REM sleep, you've probably heard of it. Um, it's really important for uh, brain functioning. So these birds slept for 10 seconds intervals at a time uh, when they were totally asleep when they were flying. 
frigate birds are the only bird to ever be shown to do this so far. Um, the other sort of long held theory that uh, these, this study debunked was for a long time, scientists assumed that when birds were migrating, you know, they're working so hard, they must be sleeping um, rel a relatively um, similar amount to when they are not migrating or when they're not on these long flights. Not so in the frigate bird study. These birds only slept for on average about 41 minutes a day when they were on these long flights, um, as opposed to when they are on land or not on these long flights um, over nine hours a day. So there seems to be this like major uh, decrease in sleep um, and this accumulated sleep deprivation that these birds can withstand for days and even weeks on end. In support of this frigate bird study, 10 years earlier in 2006, uh, there was a paper that came out on a study of Swainson's thrushes in captivity, not wild birds, um, but their researchers discovered that the birds underwent nine second power naps um, at intervals during the migration season, which indicates that maybe this behavior of these short power naps during migration could be ingrained in certain bird species. That's not to say though that all bird species handle this question of how to sleep while on long flights in the same way. Uh, back in 2006, so 10 years before the frigate bird study, um, a paper came out that was looking at alpine swifts who can fly over 200 days in one continuous flight, mind boggling. Um, and it found that the birds uh, did show some decreases in brain activity at certain times during the flight, but the scientists were pretty sure that it wasn't really full sleep. Um, and actually they hypothesized from this study that the birds might just not sleep at all while they are flying. Um, that is still yet to be determined with more sensitive uh, technology, um, but there is some evidence from sort of a different field of ornithology to suggest that birds might not need sleep in the same way that humans do. Um, in a study of pectoral sandpipers, um, which are a polygynous type of bird, meaning that one male mates with a lot of females. So, um, you know, mating season for this male is very um, energetically expensive. And the study found that the males who forewent sleep the most, even some that seemed to forego sleep completely during the mating season, ended up siring more offspring than those who slept more, um, indicating that maybe lack of sleep and accumulated lack of sleep doesn't affect birds in the same way that it would humans. So, hope you guys learned something today, the crazy world of bird sleep. Um, I will be back soon with another video. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. I'll see you soon, bye.